Thanks for tuning in to Duckworks. I'm Chris, and today we have an exciting LEGO collection update video. Previously, I posted a video showcasing my very first LEGO Comic Con minifigures, which you can check out linked in the description below. And I've been lucky enough, thanks to the YouTube ad revenue and all of your viewership watching these videos, to actually acquire a few more Comic Con and event exclusive LEGO figures, which are probably some of the rarest LEGO minifigures in my entire collection. Now, previously, we actually took a look at some of them. I have them all lined up here because I'm still working on reshuffling my collection, but we got a chance to take an in-depth look at the Deadpool duck figure, the Adam from Legends of Tomorrow and Arrow. We have Arsenal from Arrow, Batman of Zuranar, and Vixen from Legends of Tomorrow. So a lot of these were mostly DC-based. Deadpool duck was really the only Marvel one, but we fixed that today because I've managed to get a quite a few large number of different LEGO Marvel, Comic-Con, and DC fandom, and other event exclusive minifigures to share with all of you. And today's a pretty good mix because we have a few DC ones, we have a few Marvel ones, there's a pretty even mix of five more Comic-Con figures. And so without further ado, I think it's time we just jump in and take a look at these very special LEGO figures. Okay, so here we have my next assortment of five different Comic-Con exclusive LEGO figures. Now, as you can see, one of them is not actually from Comic-Con. This Supergirl minifigure was initially made for Comic-Con based off of the Supergirl TV show on the CW. However, with 2020 and everything, Comic-Con getting shut down for lockdowns and whatnot, this transitioned to be an online exclusive for the DC Fandom event, where folks could enter a sweepstakes if they attended the Fandom event online to be able to win this figure. I actually submitted my entry, but unfortunately I did not win the sweepstakes. There were only a few of them that did do exist and actually got sent out. So unfortunately I did have to buy this on the secondhand market, but everything else is a Comic-Con exclusive. We're going to start with some of the oldest ones and work our way up just to kind of go in order here. So let's set some of these aside. Now, I did reiterate this in my initial Comic-Con video, but the reason that I collect LEGO is not for kind of the rarity value. I never keep anything sealed, really, and I basically just want to have these figures to have them out in my collection. I always think it's better to take figures out of the boxes and play around with them and see how they move rather than just leaving them inside a sealed box. So that's why I'm just going to be opening these up. I'm not going to be throwing out the packaging, but I'll probably just, I don't know, throw them in a box or something like that. I really just wanted to get it for the figures themselves because uh, if you aren't aware, for my LEGO collection, I actually display all the different superhero minifigures and minifigs of a lot of other themes all together on one wall, so I kind of want to be able to slot these in in these spaces where it makes sense for me. So the first figure that I got here is actually the oldest one. This is the Collector. He was exclusive to San Diego Comic-Con 2014, based on the collector's appearance in, of course, the MCU movies. Now, this one was a pretty relevant one I wanted to get because, spoiler alert, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special revealed that he actually survived the events of Infinity War and is still alive, sold nowhere to the Guardians, so maybe he'll be making an appearance elsewhere. He also does feature quite a lot in the Disney Parks ride. I literally got back from Disneyland yesterday, so that was pretty cool because I literally went on the ride that featured this character, and then came home to find this character waiting for me in the mail. Now this is a really interesting figure graphic design-wise because the face does not really look like any other standard LEGO face. You can see that he has two different expressions here, so you've got an angrier one and kind of a more stern one which I think definitely fits the character. There is something about the graphic design that feels a little bit odd to me in terms of standing out from other LEGO minifigures graphics-wise. It's not a bad thing, it's just interesting. He reuses a white cape from LEGO Legends of Chima, actually. This was a cape for War is the Wolf, which is a cool piece to get there. But then, of course, looking at his torso itself, this is a remarkably detailed torso featuring some different layers of purple printing on the dark red vest. He has some sort of, I guess, a pocket watch or a space pocket watch or something like that emblazoned on it. And even the legs are very, very simple. You've just got some dark red printing there, but they just articulate as normal. Now, of course, this is all authentic LEGO. This is the real deal, so that is very cool to get this. I definitely wanted to check that after opening them, just in case, but it was bought on BrickLink, so really don't have any worries about fakes or whatnot. He is holding as an accessory, just a very simple accessory here with the three stud stack that is actually supposed to represent the ether or the reality stone containment unit as seen in Thor the Dark World, which was this character's first appearance. Now for this figure, I spent 
975 US dollars. So this was one of the most expensive Comic-Con figures I've acquired yet. Nearly $1,000 for this figure, making it one of the rarest in my collection, but definitely one I really wanted to get because surprisingly enough, LEGO hasn't done that many MCU-themed types of minifigures for Comic-Con exclusive. They do a lot of comic stuff and whatnot, so I definitely wanted to get one of the only MCU figures they've done, which is a very cool thing to get. And I also really like how the actual paper piece that is inserted into the pamphlet itself can be opened up, which is something they did around the Comic-Con exclusives of 2014, but no other years, because specifically, they kind of kept it to that. So let's put this back in the box here. Now, the thing is, I, I noticed some people were saying, oh, you're, you're damaging the packaging and the clear shell case when you're opening them. You can just buy these online. Like, LEGO buys them from an external source. You can buy them for very cheap online if you wanted to get the external clamshell. Really, the only rare thing about these is the cardboard piece, which I absolutely do want to keep safe, as well as, of course, the minifigure itself. So, I mean, th these can get dented up. It doesn't really matter. I can always just buy extras because they are very, very easy to come by because LEGO gets them from extra external third-party retailers, so there's nothing actually that special about the clamshell packaging. Moving forwards into the future, I believe our next one here is 2018, I think this is. Let me check the year here. Let's double check. Where does it say the year? This is 2018, yes. So this is the Black Lightning figure from the CWDC short-lived Arrowverse show. I did manage to watch... <laughs> Unfortunately, I watched all of the Arrowverse. Some good stuff, a lot of bad stuff in it. Black Lightning wasn't too bad, it was just, it kind of came and went, but I'm kind of wanting to collect all of the CW Arrowverse style of minifigures because they were a big part of my childhood growing up. I definitely really did love the shows, especially Arrow and Flash when I was a kid, back when they were good in seasons one and two. Of course, there were ups and downs as the years went on, but I definitely have very fond memories of doing a lot of speculation with my friends in middle school and high school about what was going on in the shows and whatnot, so those were some good times shared and I definitely wanted to have all the CWDC minifigures I can because the designs are actually really cool. Now, Black Lightning here, I spent $293.26 on. He is not one of the more popular characters, which is why he is so cheap, unfortunately speaking, because it is a really good character. I guess, fortunately for me, because this was a very cheap one to get, I think this is probably one of the cheapest minifigures that you can get for a Comic-Con exclusive. Black Lightning here is remarkably authentic to the on-screen portrayal of Jefferson Pierce. You can see he has two different expressions, and I love the way that the goggles are done, because he's actually got layers of coloration in the goggles themselves, which make it look really cool. And I also really like the way that the lightning stripes are done here, giving them a little bit of a glow as compared to the very black exterior of the torso itself. All in all, this is a really cool looking minifigure. I actually love the amount of detailing on here from the little intricate bits and pieces of his costume showing the technology weave on it. This to me was always one of the coolest Arrowverse suits. I think a lot of effort was put into making the suit and it makes sense because the show actually debuted around the same time as the minifigure for 2018. So it totally makes sense that they would actually make this D2018 exclusive and also advertise DC Super Villains, which is, in my opinion, one of the best Lego games out there. If you haven't played this, y'all are missing out. But with that, we have taken a look at the Black Lightning figure. We went from one of the most expensive ones to one of the least expensive ones, so that feels a little bit better for my wallet. One other thing I do want to say is that all of these minifigures have been specifically bought thanks to your support via YouTube and my other stores like my Bricklink store and my custom Bionicle resin store. I never thought I would be able to collect Comic-Con minifigures, but thanks to the YouTube, thanks to everybody watching these videos right now, I have been able to be able to showcase this for all of you. So thank you so much for watching videos. Every video watched is a little bit more ad revenue to be able to allow me to buy things like this and showcase them on YouTube. So thank you so much for your viewership, and it really does mean a lot. Moving on from there, we have a couple of figures from 2019, continuing along the DC theme, and we'll save that one, which is very exciting to me for a little bit later. But this one right here is the Zebra Batman. It was a Comic-Con 2019 exclusive to celebrate 80 years of Batman. Unfortunate that LEGO did nothing for the superheroes anniversary this year, but you know, you win some, you lose some. 
This was a specialized outfit for Batman that calls back to some of the more goofy comics back in the day. The perfect minifigure to give us for this kind of thing. It's interesting how the back of this one is still advertising DC supervillains because I guess it would had only been available for about half a year or maybe three-fourths of a year, so they were still advertising that. And yeah, this was one of the last in-person event exclusives, and now LEGO doesn't seem to be doing these anymore, so this might be the last of a dying breed of event exclusives they kind of stopped in 2020, which I don't mind. I mean, these are always way too expensive to obtain. But this is a really cool looking Batman figure. The limbs are very loose because the specific factory plant in San Diego was the one that made these. So for whatever reason, they do the limbs a little bit looser there. But if you look at that, this is the first time we've actually gotten printing, I believe, on the sides of the Batman cowl, which is very cool. I didn't even know LEGO had the technology to do that. Now, this is quite interesting because the face itself is pure white, so unlike Batman's standard faces where it's like a skin color and then a white band, this is just a pure white head. This is just straight up white, which is very, very interesting to see that is the head. Now, the cape is probably one of my favorite things about the minifigure because it has this zebra printing on it, which is very, very funny to me. I love the way that this whole thing came together. And then of course, the body itself is quite good. You've got some printing on the back, the gold belt, but overall just a very simple zebra style print. One thing that I personally really wish that they did with this character was give it arm printing. Now, LEGO doesn't typically do a lot of arm printing for the event exclusives for some reason. I don't know. I would have figured that these would be the most deluxe figures that you could possibly make out of LEGO. So I don't know why they don't do that, but for whatever reason, they haven't really done arm or leg printing or even dual molding for the characters, which basically relegates them to as simple mini figures as you can make, but I think that it really would have been cool to see that stripe pattern continue on the arms, and maybe even the legs, because obviously this is 2019. LEGO had the technology to do that, but they chose not to for some reason. But then again, it is still a very nice, goofy variant of Batman that I certainly am very happy to have gotten my hands on. The final thing is the price. I spent $849.61 on this particular figure making it one of the more expensive ones. It absolutely is not one of the most expensive ones, which I haven't even touched yet. A commenter on the previous video was absolutely correct saying that I am starting with the cheap ones, and yes, I, I am starting with the cheap ones and work my way up. I am not spending $10,000 on Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man today, not for a long while. So I'm starting with these cheaper ones. Ch cheaper. I mean, I, I still spent $894 on a minifigure, but they are the relatively cheaper ones, and yeah, that's kind of how I want to do these. I do want to start start off with the ones that are easier for me to get. The prices only go up over time, as I've observed for the Comic-Con figures, so I definitely want to get them while they are cheap, especially the Black Lightning figure being around only $293. That was that was pretty fantastic. Now, speaking of money values, uh, this one was not very cheap because this is the PS4 Spider-Man. Now, the PS4 Spider-Man game was one of the most popular Spider-Man games when it first came out. Interesting how they have a Marvel Gamerverse logo. Yeah, I have a real gamer moment right here. I actually have not played the game yet, but after I bought this figure, I bought the game for PC. I am only a PC gamer, PC supremacy. You can comment down below what you think is right, but I don't really own any consoles. I only game on PC. So I kind of wanted to wait for this to be available on PC, and it just became available just this this year, so I figured, you know what, I feel like I'm going to play the game and regret not owning this while I'm playing it, so why not just get a preemptive strike on it, get the figure right now so I can have it with me while I'm playing the game, and man, this is a cool looking suit. I always saw pictures and videos and clips of the game, and I thought that the suit was probably one of the coolest Spider-Man suits we have ever gotten. I love the white logo. I mean, that is such a cool design, and even some white details on the feet. Now again, this is a pretty standard minifigure because they do not do any arm printing or leg printing for the minifigures themselves, so it is pretty much just a standard style of printing. He does have a new head, though, and this is just such a cool-looking Spider-Man figure, and sure, it is just another type of suit for Spider-Man, which I think is the perfect kind of Comic-Con exclusive. It's not something like, I don't know, any of these or these two characters, the Collector or Black Lightning, where we never have any other figures of them, which is a shame. This is just a Spider-Man outfit, which I think is the perfect thing. Fans of the game can get it if they want to have it, but otherwise you can very easily just go without having this in your collection if you haven't played the game. Now I spent 957 US dollars on this, which was pretty high. Not as high as the collector there. I guess we started with the most expensive one. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, this was 
$957, which is pretty steep, but I really did want this figure. And now I am on the lookout for the Miles Morales figure as well, because that obviously complements this one. That suit, I feel, doesn't quite stand out compared to the other LEGO Miles Morales figures as compared to this one, which is why I kind of wanted to get this one first and see how I felt about things. But yeah, this is a really cool figure to get. Love the printing style. The detail is fantastic. And there are rumors that he is appearing in the Into the Spider-Verse movie, which is coming out next year. I don't know if those rumors are true, but they seem pretty credible on the uh, Reddit subreddit for Marvel Studios spoilers. They seem pretty certain that he's going to be in the movie. So I would expect that this character would skyrocket in price if he appeared in that movie. So I also wanted to get a preemptive strike and get him now before I have to spend something stupid like $10,000 like the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, which I will not get until LEGO makes more No Way Home sets where... Come on, LEGO has to give us another Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, eventually causing the price of that one to go down because everyone can get Andrew Garfield Spider-Man or at least probably a different printing variant from the modern sets because LEGO really needs to give us more No Way Home sets. They're literally just sitting on money there. I am sure they will at some point in the next year or two years, maybe even three years, but I will not be buying the $10,000 Andrew Garfield Spider-Man until that point because I'm sure LEGO will do it, causing the price to go down. Moving on, we have just one more figure. This is the DC Fandom exclusive figure for Supergirl here. Now again, this is one of the other CW DC shows, although the show didn't start off on CW. This is depicting one of the looks for the, I believe, the second to last season when she was still having bangs. I think she switched back to her normal haircut for the final season. But this is a really interesting one because this was, again, a Fandom exclusive. I spent 684 US dollars on this, which is kind of mid-range for a Comic-Con or event exclusive minifigure. It's not the most expensive, it's not the least expensive either, so it's kind of a middle-of-the-ground one. Supergirl was a pretty popular show, even though the writing kind of fell off around the final season. Don't quote me on that, but maybe do quote me on that. I think that's a common consensus. I did like it for what it was. I liked the character of Supergirl, and I liked the portrayal of the character in live action. Sure, there were a lot of complaints that it was basically just a female version of Superman, but I guess if you're making a Supergirl show, there's that's one direction you could take of it. I kind of wish they explored more unique aspects of her personality in the comics, though. Like, Supergirl had a lot of anger issues in the comics and even became a Red Lantern at one point, which was referenced in LEGO Dimensions. They didn't really do anything with that, so this is basically one of the CW minifigures. Enough about what I think about the show and more about the figure. Now, Initially, the two different faces perplexed me a little bit. I wasn't quite sure what the blue eyes signified until I realized that I was just being dumb and the blue eyes obviously signify her firing her laser heat vision in the show, which shows up as blue beams instead of red beams like Superman's. In the TV show itself, they kind of fire out of her eyes. So I think that's a really cool thing to get, actually. It does kind of just look like her eyes are blue, which is a little bit odd to me. But, of course, if you don't like the way that it particularly looks... You can always just flip it around, and that is a really good representation of the character for the actress. I mean, that really looks like Melissa Benoist there with the facial expression. They really captured the actor licenses right here, which I think is a really good job for the particular figure. Now, the suit itself is good because we have gotten Supergirl minifigures before that are more comic-styled, so you're not really missing out if you don't have this one, but I actually really love the amount of detailing included here. It is a one-to-one -one representation of the CW suit. It's just a shame that they didn't dual mold the legs. I mean, this is a very, very obvious candidate for half of the legs being blue, half the legs being dark red. I just wish that LEGO would do dual molding or printing for some of these event exclusives because this feels like the perfect opportunity to give us dual molded legs, but for whatever reason they didn't. And if you're going to be going to an event all the way to get a figure and whatnot, I feel like they should be a little better. One unfortunate thing though is that the cape is pretty stretched and damaged by just being out of the box because of the way that it was assembled. It was kind of carelessly put on, the hair pulls it downwards, the hole has been enlarged. Thankfully though, I believe the dark red cape comes in a lot of other figures. It absolutely is not exclusive to this one, so it's not that big of a deal. You can always just replace the cape, but it's a shame to have opened this out of the box for the first time and have the cape be so damaged, but again, you can see just by putting the hair on, that really kind of bends the cape in ways that it doesn't like. So I guess that is kind of part of why the cape looks the way it does. But with that, 
We have summed up my next haul for the Comic-Con figures. Now, I may be taking a bit of a break after this from buying them because I wanted to focus on buying other stuff, such as buying every copy of Exo Force sets three times over to do all the combo models and all the alternate models in one video. I don't know what I'm doing, that's pretty crazy. But that is kind of where my YouTube budget is going nowadays, so it was cool to kind of explore some of these Comic-Con figures. Do let me know, though, in the comments below if you have any sort of bulk discount or deal on these. I'm trying to get all of them. You know the ones that I got previously in the previous 5 video. Now you know I have 10, and I am trying to own every single Comic-Con figure. That is the eventual goal for the collection, and if you do own multiples, please contact me. I do want to apologize, I get a lot of messages on Instagram and Twitter. I don't really use Instagram and Twitter too much, and they do go to my message requests folder, which doesn't even give me a notification, so I do miss out on hundreds of messages. I do try to respond to them when I can, but it's just so, so much. Um, I do, however, have Discord, and if you go to the link in the description below, you can join the Duckbricks Discord server. If you at me there, that is probably the most reliable way of me actually seeing your message. Uh, I would not recommend private messaging me because I don't get notifications of that. It goes into a message requests folder, so I, I often miss a lot of Discord requests. I also have an email, hello at duckbricks.com, which I check once every few weeks, so I do kind of try to go through those emails and whatnot. So do if you do have any of these in bulk that I do not own already and are willing to maybe make a deal or work out something, I also have a lot of stuff in my LEGO collection I could offer up for trade. If you own multiples of these and are looking to get rid of them or sell them or trade them for something, Thing, please let me know because I am on the hunt and let's work something out. But with that, we have summed up our look at these five new Comic-Con figures, kind of a random assortment. I'm glad to get two more Marvel ones, though, although the DC ones tend to be cheaper than Marvel. I, I wonder why that is. Maybe, maybe it's because DC desperately needs better management, but now that James Gunn's in charge, maybe it'll, it'll be better. So that is a reflection of the past, and I'm very excited for DC's future slate with James Gunn and Peter Safran in charge. Anyways, that about sums up this video. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed our look at these special Comic-Con figures. Can't wait to add them to my wall. All right, and with that, we have summed up our look at my brand new set of LEGO Comic-Con minifigures. Now, I still have quite a ways to go, and there are so many special event exclusive figures I've yet to get my hands on, but this is a great addition to my collection, and let me know down in the comments below, do you actually own any of these? Are there any that you would recommend that I try to get next? And I definitely tried to aim these around particular announcements, such as the announcement that the PS4 Spider-Man will be in the next Into the Spider-Verse movie. I'm sure the value of that figure is going to skyrocket after that movie comes out, and he's actually rumored to be featured in it. We don't know for sure, but the rumors are saying he will be in it. I don't want a repeat of the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man situation going from like $4,000 to $12,000 overnight after he appeared in Spider-Man No Way Home. Trying to prevent that again, so if you have any ideas on what Comic-Con figures to get now while I have the chance, let me know. But of course, thank you all so much for tuning into this video. I hope you enjoyed this special look at some of the rarest LEGO figures ever, and be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. Thanks, and bye for now.